Hi everyone, I'm Brian with Obedia and PC Audio Labs, and in today's video I'm just going to go over a couple of the cool new ways that you can edit uh, drums and patterns inside of the new Personas Studio One version 4. I'm going to be using Studio One 4 Professional. Your mileage may vary a little bit with respect to samples that you've got access to and things like that, uh, but this functionality is something you're going to have access to in all the versions of Studio One. Uh, so let's just jump right in and talk about it. I should mention real quickly, if you want to learn how to use these features and all the other features of Persona Studio One 4 in real time with a professional digital audio trainer, give us a call at Obedia MPC Audio Labs and we can help you out one-on-one -on -one in real time to learn at Persona Studio One 4 and all of your digital audio hardware and software. Now, uh, I've talked in other videos about the new virtual instrument uh, refreshes inside of Studio One 4 and I was mentioning the Impact Virtual Instrument, which has had a great overhaul. You want to check out our other video about that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and load up a drum kit real quick here. Let's just try the Funky Kit. All right, cool. Pretty basic drum kit right here that I've dragged in. Uh, now, there's different ways to be able to interact with the Impact XT and with other virtual instruments inside of Studio One. Of course, the way that most of us are familiar with is we simply start recording in our timeline in Studio One, and then we start playing a MIDI keyboard, a MIDI controller of some kind, and we record those notes. And that works really well, but in electronic music production, we're kind of used to working very much in loops and being able to dial loops in and experiment a little bit and play with them. And so it's kind of nice to have something that you can sort of just program bit by bit in order to get things the way that you would like it to be instead of having to play things in real time. Because let's face it, playing in real time means that sometimes you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You can go back and you can fix those mistakes by quantizing and things like that. But what if you didn't have to worry about anything like that? What if you got to just program your drums or your other sounds and get things exactly the way you wanted them? Well, you can do that in Studio One by making use of uh, two cool new features. Now, first of all, the, the first feature is, let's just go ahead and expand our uh, editor right here, and I'm going to double click and create a new instrument region, and this is blank. We'll double click on this, and then I've got my editor expanded down here on the bottom. Now, one of the first cool new ways that you can do that is by making use of drum mode. Uh, some of you may be familiar with uh, something like drum mode from uh, digital audio workstations from in the past and things along those lines. This is something that I've been using for a really long time. And uh, so now it has made its way into Studio One version 4. So when we switch to drum mode, you notice the difference between drum mode and uh, just simple sta uh, standard melodic mode. Melodic mode deals with using a keyboard, whereas drum mode is actually going to show us all of the instruments that we have available to us from our Impact XT instance that we have right here. And then we can manually program these notes in. And so when I now click on the Paint tool in uh, Studio One, it actually looks like a drumstick. And when I move this over each of these various uh, grid uh, markers that I have right here, I can click to enter a new note. And this is entering MIDI data just the same as if I were to record MIDI data manually using keyboard or something along those lines. But in this case, I'm able to jump in and do this by making use of the grid that I have access to right here. And the drum editor is just super useful because it allows me to see what uh, drum instruments I'm working with here on the left hand side and then just start to program those one by one. So this is something that's super cool, and I think a lot of folks are going to be having a lot of fun with this as time goes on. And the next big step in Studio One version 4 is going to be the uh, option to use patterns. Now, patterns is something that you might be familiar with from electronic music production over the past, let's say, 20, 30 years. Um, but old tricks are sometimes the best tricks, and patterns is a really cool new way to be able to program your drums or other instruments in Studio One, and here's just a quick gist of how it works. I'm going to create another blank MIDI uh, region here, another instrument region. This is blank. But now instead of using the drum editor or using melodic editing, 
going to right click on this blank section. I'm going to go down to instrument parts and I'm now going to select the option for insert pattern. All right, so now I've got a pattern that I've inserted. I'll delete that blank region that I had and I'm going to pull my pattern over right here. This pattern is going to show me a completely new feature in Studio One, something that we haven't had access to before. This looks a little bit like the drum editor, but you're going to notice that it goes a little deeper. Namely, there are mute and solo controls that are immediately available for each of the drum instruments that I am working with. And, more accurately, the pattern editor allows me to be able to step edit and enter notes uh, which will then play back uh, different parts of my virtual instrument in real time. And so by editing patterns, it's kind of like being able to just use a grid to then light up different squares on, and each time your uh, transport rolls over one of those lighted squares, you will hear that sound play. And so it's a very visual way to be able to program your drum loops or your synth loops or whatever that may be. And I'll just show you a little bit of how it works. We're gonna start by just doing a standard 4-4 kick. And then we'll hit play. And this tempo is a little slow. Let's go ahead and change this to maybe 120. And then we'll set our loop and jump in. All right, great. So I've got a standard kick, and then maybe I want to do some snare. All right, pretty straightforward, and I can add in a little bit of hi-hat. And I can just keep programming. Right, so this is pretty cool. Like already I have a beat that I've created and it only took me like maybe a minute to be able to just create a beat. And all I'm doing is just clicking and entering notes into my pattern editor and into the grid that I have here in the pattern editor. Uh, so that's a great way to work. I can just simply move on from there and I could create more patterns if I wanted to. But I can take the workflow up to the next level by making use of variations. And so variations I have access to here on the left-hand side of the pattern editor. And you'll notice right now it's listed as variation one, which I can name this if I want by clicking on it. But I'm gonna go ahead and create a second variation. Now when I create a second variation, you notice everything is empty right here again. And so I can just, that's gonna be a bit of a mess, but that's okay. All right, pretty basic, <laughs> nothing special happening there because I'm just randomly entering notes. But watch what happens when I then click on variation one. And there's my variation again. So the reason that this is cool is because it can really speed up the process of creating beats and loops and things like that in Studio One. And here's how, if I wanted variation one, to be this first section of my song, and then I wanted to use variation two a little bit, I could, for instance, uh, make a copy of this current MIDI region, this instrument note uh, region that I'm working with, drag and drop it, and then I can click that second uh, copy of it that I have made, and you'll notice that it's called variation one, but if I leave it highlighted and then click on variation two, now it is variation two. And then I could repeat the process again if I wanted to, drag and drop, and then make that third iteration variation one. So now I can go back and forth between the two of those, which is really a great way to be able to just very quickly uh, kind of play a song, play a pattern, play a beat, whatever that may be. And this is pretty cool. Like I've already created a couple different patterns and the reason that I really like this is that programming beats electronically can be a little dry from time to time. It can be something that, yeah, let's just face it, listening the same loop over and over and over again is not always the most exciting thing. So it's really nice when you have something that makes it a little easier to be able to program and play around and be creative with. So this is something that you can do with the pattern editor. Let's talk about one last bit of fun that we can have 
with the pattern editor, and that is by actually making use, uh, even more in-depth use, of the steps in the pattern editor. So if I take a look right here in the pattern editor, you notice that I've got the number 16 cascading down for all of my sounds that I have loaded up in uh, my Impact, Impact XT virtual instrument, but uh, what happens if I click here? Well, now I can enter a new number. Let's go ahead and hit 4 for the kick, and then we'll do 8 for the snare. And so what you're going to notice is that now the number of steps in my pattern editor have changed for the kick and for the snare, rather than 16, and I only have 4 for the kick and 8 for the snare. And why is this useful? Well, this is a great way to be able to quickly program uh, some of my sounds inside of the pattern editor. I'm going to go ahead and just enter the kick on the first uh, step right here in my step editor, and then I'll enter the snare right here on the fifth step. Now, usually in order to program a four on the floor, a kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, I would need to program this as I showed you earlier in this video. I need to go one by one and enter each of those notes into each of the steps. But watch what happens when I start playing back now. And you can see, if you take a look right up here in this uh, MIDI region that I have, you're going to note that this looks very much like if I had programmed this by hand. If I had manually programmed this, I would have a kick on the 1, 2, 3, 4, and I have a snare on the 2 and the 4. So kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare. But I didn't have to program that by hand. All I had to do was change the number of steps that I'm using in the pattern editor and then just enter my notes into the steps uh, on the appropriate steps. So again, now I have uh, the kick playing as 4 to the bar, and I've got the snare playing as 8 to the bar. And so this means that while I still have 16 steps for other instruments inside of the pattern editor, I can just enter single notes, just a single note for each of these instruments, and get a simple 4 on the floor. And that's pretty cool. That's a fun way to be able to program patterns very quickly. And again, if you're looking to save time or just be a little more creative about things, that's a cool way to do it. Now, I can go back. Of course, I can go back to 16 steps for everybody here. We'll just go back to the default. And now uh, let's go ahead and just have a little bit more fun and go through some of the last things that I can do here for speeding up the editing process. Let's go back to my kick. And now take a look right here uh, at some of the quick and easy shortcuts I have. Here's an option for set every fourth step. When I set that, again, that's a kick on the on the 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's going to give me a kick on the 1, the 5, the 9, and the 13. And that's a standard 4 on the floor. And then I also have the option on these shortcuts to use set every second step. That will add some more notes. And I can fill the lane, 16 steps, and I can clear it, nothing. And I can also use shift, which is this option here, shift lane, that shifts everybody over one to the right. Quick and easy way to be able to edit things there. So that's super useful. And then I have another great function, which is enable record or step record. Now, if I hit record, but if I don't hit record in Studio One, now I can make use of step record. And this is super useful. A lot of folks who have been producing electronic music for a long time probably remember this one. Step record allows me to step-by-step uh, -step record. And so now I'm just simply, every time I play a note on my keyboard, I advance to the next step. And so this allows me to step record one by one, and I did not have to roll my transport in Studio One to start recording. And again, this is just kind of an old school way of doing things in electronic music production, but something that I think a lot of folks will kind of have a little bit of fun with. Finally, let's talk about how we can make use of the automation inside of the pattern editor and make use of velocity, repeat, and probability a little bit, and these are pretty straightforward. Velocity is how hard a note is going to be played, and that can be very soft or very hard. We can draw that down to one or draw it all the way up to 100 for each of the instruments and the uh, steps that they are then playing on the pattern editor, so we can adjust that. We also have the option to adjust the repeat. Let's go ahead and try repeat 
on the hi-hat here a little bit and we'll just try a little bit of repeat and just play this back. Yep. Again, a little bit glitchy there and this just means I'm going to repeat that note. And that's kind of a cool way to be able to get a little bit uh, more complex about the programming of my drums. And then you have the, I have the option for probability, and probability is just going to allow me to humanize the playback of my instruments a little bit more. So uh, most of the time when we're making electronic music, things can sound a little bit robotic, and we're going to cut down on that robotic feel a little bit by being able to make use of adjusting the probability just a little bit. And this allows me to just kind of dial things in so it doesn't sound all the same. Everything's not hitting all the same. And again, I can adjust velocity a little bit to do this as well. So you just want to play around until you kind of get things dialed in, but this will give you a little more cohesive, a little more human sounding loop. You can just kind of hear this adds a little bit of flavor, a little bit of different groove to everything. If I'm making use of repeat, I can make things groove a little further. There's just a lot that I can do to be able to kind of make this sound a little bit different by making use of those automation functions. That's how you can really kind of change things up just a little bit. So this is just a really great way uh, to be able to play around a little bit with uh, these different functions inside of the pattern editor and be able to have a little bit of fun with it as well. So there you have it guys, that's a look at the pattern editor and the drum editor inside of Persona Studio One version 4. Hope you guys found this useful. Go have some fun with it, experiment, and see how things come out for you. Now if you want to learn how to do this in real time with a professional digital audio trainer just like myself, give us a call at Obedia PC Audio Labs. You can work one-on-one -on -one with us. We'll help you attain your technology because that is what we do best here at Obedia PC Audio Labs. As always everyone, I'm Brian with Obedia PC Audio Labs, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Today's pro audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your pro audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost-effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.